Yeah. Can you still do an Elvis imitation for us right here, right now? There was a chill party in the county jail. The prison band was there, they began to wail. The band was jumping and the jump began to swing. Should have hit his knocked out chair, but sing, let's rock. Are there some German and Irish influences in your music? Yeah, I learned the German song, uh, Die kann ja so krass, wenn wir sind. Ah, from you, you. And yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Henning Mai. Jamie, you've published your debut album, Me and Only Me, in winter, and I really love it. Why I had to wait so long? So basically, I was, um, I played the guitar first. That was the first musical step for me in my life. So it started that when I was probably about nine or ten and then I gave it up then for a couple of years and uh, yeah I then done a musical in secondary school and I played uh, as Elvis so I was the lead singer and I, I've actually found out that I could sing doing the musical so like I just went home and just practiced singing and I went in and auditioned and I ended up getting the lead so it was really nice then to have that so then after I finished school then I was like okay well I really want to pursue music now so I went and done a course in Dublin and uh, yeah, so it was a singer-songwriter course. And that's actually what got me over to Germany because they do a band camp with the Pop Academy and loads of uh, colleges from like all over Europe come together and they do one big band camp. And then after the band camp, then I actually had Blossom. That was the, they really, really liked that song. So I got offered uh, to go over for a scholarship then for one semester. And that's just how everything kind of fell into place then. So it was perfect. It couldn't have worked out better for me. Very cool. So one of your first step was doing Elvis covers at a musical. Yes, exactly. That, that was the first time that I really found out that I could sing. And it was that kind of, it was more belt and like, it's not the way I sing now. It's like more musical theater kind of singing. So it was very much, you know, belting it out. But it was, it was really, really fun and dancing and acting as well as that. So yeah, really Elvis cool. is a very different style from what you're doing now. But yeah. can you still do an Elvis imitation for us right here, right now? Oh, I don't know. I have to. I'll have to swing the hips. You know, it's more like the hips, and the, I haven't done it in so long. But uh, what what was one of the one of the lines would have been with the with the girls? Oh, it was so long ago. Now you know some lyrics of the songs. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. The water chew party in the county jail. The prison band was there, they began to wail. The band was jumping and the jump began to swing. Should have hit his knocked out chair, but sing, let's rock. <laughs> oh, baby, let's rock. <laughs> Very nice. I want to dance right now. <laughs> I was but so close, hanging my hips. Not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Thank you for this little yeah. fun. Yeah, no um, <laughs> so you have started your career in uh, Ireland, your musician career, and then uh, your first album recording was here in Germany. Um, are there some German and Irish influences in your music? Um, well, Irish influence, uh, Hosier would be a huge influence in terms of songwriting and like kind of guitar and mu musical style stuff like as well. And the soundscape that he uses as well for his recording is very, very cool. But then German, I actually, I learned the German song. Uh, ah, uh, from you, you. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Henning Mai. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I know the guy from... Um, he does, he used to do some busking with um, uh, Sam Thompson, I think it was. It's, they're, they're always on YouTube. They're very, very good singers. So they're from the two guys from the UK, but they always used to come together. So I, I really appreciate their music. Yeah, so they'd be a big influence as well, yeah. Very cool. We will hear a little cutout of a cover um, which you made from Who's There Later. But uh, mm -hmm. first, I want to talk uh, shortly about your band. You said you got to know them in Germany. And then yeah. you recorded the album with them. Uh, tell me more about these guys. Yeah, I'm, they're great guys. Like I, I couldn't have been luckier, to be honest. So we were in the Pop Academy and we had to do... Um, uh, so basically all the songwriters had to come up and perform a song. At the, this was at the very first day of the Pop Academy. And then basically what happens is there's a bass player, guitar player, keyboard player, drummers, whatever, and they get to pick who they want to be in a band with. So the singer songwriters perform a song and then they say, I want to be in your band. So all the guys picked to be in my band. 
and then like w when we went in and started doing rehearsals together like they all really felt the music like that and they all had their own input so it was so it was so special because like everything that you hear on the album is is them you know and then my side is the guitar and the songwriting but what they felt they produced on the album so i'm so grateful to have them on, on, on board with me because it's incredible like what they can do Wow, a very happy coincidence. And uh, because of them, they, you stay in Germany now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it's, I, I always think it's so crazy how it all works out. Like, And I, I do believe in manifestation as well. So I do believe that I've, I've put it out there and I've gotten it back. So I'm very grateful for that, Like, you know, to be able to be surrounded by so many people who appreciate the music and who are involved with the music. So it's such a nice thing to have, like, because in Ireland, it's not, it's not as easy as it is over here. Like, you know, everyone just wants to help each other over here, which is just amazing. So I'm so, so grateful for everyone that's involved with me. So it's great. Very nice that you found a new uh, home in music right here in Germany. Next, Absolutely. I want to talk to you about the first song of your album. You already said a name, it is Blossom, but first yep. we see and hear a little cutout of it. You need to let go so you can grow Blossom, it is not only uh, the first song on your album, it is also one of the first songs you've ever written. Uh, when did you write it? Yeah, so that would have been when I was in uh, uni in Dublin at the time. So that would have been one of the very, very first songs that I wrote. So that probably would have been about 2017, 2018, I'd say it was, yeah. And uh, so like that was, that was a very close song. I actually won a singer-songwriter competition with that, which helped me buy my guitar. <laughs> uh, I'm using now the Taylor, so it's uh, it's one that I hold very close to my heart because it's it's the one that kind of stands out the most, I think, with people, and people are always kind of attracted to that song the most. So it's yeah, uh, um, it, it's very spontaneous as well. Like some like it's just one of those songs that kind of came naturally. Like when I was writing it, just <laughs> it was like a flow. Pardon the pun. <laughs> So this song has a very special meaning for you, not only because you could buy your first guitar uh, because of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's so many, there's so many reasons. Like, I, I feel like the song is bringing a lot of good luck to me as well. And, I, and like, lyrically as well, it's, it's something that, that like, I feel, you know, a, a lot of meaning behind it. And I, anytime I play it, I always feel exactly the way I felt when I wrote it. So it's really nice. That's very logical. Um, your last song is Cold Air. Has, has it also a special meaning? So the first one and the last one? Yeah, yeah. Cold Air was actually written over here with a different band. We done um, a Sony Songwriter uh, week in the Pop Academy. And uh, so basically there's guys that had to come together and write a song for me. So they wrote the instrumentation behind it. And uh, we had live harp, we had drums, we had bass, we had guitar. So then, uh, yeah, they brought the... the the instrumentation the song to me and then I basically I just wrote the lyrics for it and the, yeah the lyrics are quite are about you know like not not wanting to fail and you know like having that kind of anxiety you know with performing as well like it's it's so many different kind of meanings behind it so it's definitely one and it's it, I think it's a powerful song too so I, I really love that song as well I love it. It's hard for me to decide which is my favorite song of your album, but I think I would go with uh, Cold Air. I, I like this uh, very nice dreamy style and it starts so slow and then it's uh, getting more and more intense. Yeah, I think it's a really nice song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I love that as well because like I didn't, like I wasn't playing any instruments in it, which is you know, the first song that I didn't play any instruments in, in the, in the album. So it was really nice to be able to kind of just sit back and let other people like, <laughs> like interpret what they thought would suit me, you know, and then I just wrote the lyrics and it just worked out really well. So really, really happy with how it turned out. And they felt it. So it's a big teamwork, this song. Um, yeah. 
Have you uh, first uh, written it as a poem? Because I heard you often doing this, that uh, you start writing a poem and then maybe later it's getting a song. Absolutely, yeah. Like Leonard Cohen would be a huge influence of mine. So, and he always wrote poems and stuff like that. Like, and then you can hear it like in his songs, like you're like, oh yeah, if you take it apart and look at it and read it, it is a poem. So that's kind of the way I always looked at it. Like with, with songwriting, that's how I kind of approach my songwriting is to write everything down and to try and make it fit and, you know, make it make sense. And then obviously to make it rhyme as well, most of the time. So it's uh, it's, it's just a nice way of songwriting for me. And I think it's the, the best and the most comfortable way for me to write songs. How many of your poems finally end up as a song? Um. I'd say, oh, that's, that's, that's a good question. I'd say probably about 40%, I would say. <laughs> because so, some, some poems just don't, don't work with songs at the time. So, but I always hold on to them and then I might take little parts from them and introduce them into a new song. So, yeah, no, that's, that's always good as well. Okay, so sometimes the poems which doesn't end up in a song are also very helpful because a small part maybe will be in a song of yours. Absolutely. Um, what does a poem of you need to convince you to finally make a whole song out of it? Yeah, I really think that the feel, like the, the whole kind of mood and tone that I'm going for has to, has to sit right with the song. And then of course, when I say sometimes I might have a nice chord progression, so I put, try to sing the poem over and if it doesn't really fit, then I kind of be like, okay, I'm going to need to do something else now. And I bring a new poem in or as I, as I say, take out a snippet and then do it all again. So, you know, but it's, it's really refreshing to be able to do that too, because it's, it's not like I'm stuck. It's just like, well, I have that, that poem there, so it doesn't work, but I can take little parts of it and then, you know, recycle it and make something new out of it. So it's really cool. Sounds like a long ongoing process. Yeah. Next. I want to talk to you about a YouTube live concert you played together with Enia and Avu at the vocals and Yannick at the piano. But first, we will see again a little cutout of this live concert. I still watch you when you're grooving As if to water from the bottom of a pool You're moving without moving And when you move, I move You are a call of motion There are you a verb in perfect view Like Jonah on the ocean And when you move, I move The song we've seen was a cover of Movement by Holshir. Besides this, you played a phenomenal cover also of Fix You by Coldplay and of course you played the songs of your new album. Fans can see this whole live event in real life on YouTube on your account, Jamie O'Reilly. And I can really recommend it, it's especially this cover of Movement by Hoja with the girls as well. It's really amazing. Um, this was a big event for you, right? In COVID times, playing again live. Yeah, absolutely. I, and like, to be honest, I'm so glad that it was a live event because It was not only just a rejuvenation of like, you know, my music career, because I, as I said, I went home for five months there after Christmas and I couldn't get back to Germany. So kind of my music career was put on a hold. So then when I came back, then we had the plan to do the live stream. So it just felt like it was just getting everything going again. And the thing that, that I really liked about it was that all my friends and family, they wouldn't have been able to see us with the band or what we're doing at home, like if we were to play live in, say, a venue. So it was really nice for all of them at home to be able to see what I've been doing and, you know, to be able to watch it live. And yeah, I got a really good reaction from it as well, from the family so, and friends. So it was really, really nice to be able to do that. And you have also a very good relationship with the crew, with, uh, which was participating in this uh, live event. Yeah, oh, it's, it's crazy. Like, you've no idea, like the crew are just... They're just so, so good. And, you know, they do anything to help you, which is just such a nice fit to have to have people behind you like that. It's just amazing. And actually them, the guys that were the crew there, they were the guys that recorded the two music videos also. So for Blossom and Favourite Soon, that was the same team. So it's just, it's so nice to have them on board. And, you know, I really appreciate all their help. It's, it's great to, be, to have them there, so. 
Very nice. And you can really feel this atmosphere, even if you're not in the same room, uh, but also listening it's in this video. So I can really recommend it. Everybody should watch this video. Jamie O'Reilly on YouTube. And of course, we will do the link in our info box so everybody can click on it and listen to this nice concert. You've already plans for a concert with real uh, guys watching. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's we don't have any plans now at the moment, but it is, we're just trying to wait to see kind of how things are going with, with, with COVID. But it seems to be easing up very good over here in Germany, which is very, very nice. So I definitely feel like in the in the summer, I definitely plan a few gigs, but there's nothing in the works at the moment. But for sure, definitely soon, hopefully, you know, that we'll get some gigs going. I really want to play live in front of an audience again. There's just there's nothing like, it, you know, it's it's an amazing feeling. So. I can believe it and I really wish you all the best that this will work and you can play live on stage very soon. Now, at the end of this interview, I'll like to play a little decision game with you and yeah. I'll give you a few typical German and a few typical Irish things and you have to decide for either the typical German one or yeah. the typical Irish one. So you're ready? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Perfect. Let's see how uh, much German or how much Irish you are with the first <laughs> question. Of course, uh, this is a, a must ask question about the beer, uh, Guinness or Weizenbier? I do love German beer, but Guinness <laughs> it just hits different for me. It's I've, I've always loved Guinness, but yeah, I'd, ha I'd have to go with Guinness, but no disrespect to German beer. I also love that too. So, But Guinness is definitely my, my favorite beer. So. <laughs> I, I would have said the same and I was grown up here in Germany, but Guinness yes. really tastes amazing. A lot of mm. German guys don't like it. They say it's like you uh, do an espresso coffee into a, yeah. a beer, but <laughs> I like this uh, taste, this malty one. Uh, let's go on with alcohol, <laughs> whiskey yeah, or pure brandy. <laughs> Oh, I, I do. I love uh, I love whiskey. Me, me and Joe. You now, whenever we have a have a party or anything, I'll get a, a nice bottle of Jameson now, and that, that's also an Irish whiskey, but it's very very good. So, yeah, I go for a Jameson with the whiskey. Yeah, definitely. Right now, you're much uh, more the Irish guy. Maybe this will change yeah. when we look at the food, fish yeah. and chips or Maultaschen. You know Maultaschen, Swabian pockets. Ah yes. Ah. Yeah, the guys made that, so that's a hard one. That's a hard one there. I probably will go with fish and chips, though. <laughs> <laughs> very Irish. <laughs> yeah, very Irish. You have one more chance. Uh, with the uh, national sports we go on of both countries, hurling or soccer? Soccer. Okay, so once you are the German guy. <laughs> yeah. Definitely soccer, yeah. No, I love it. I'm actually working in an Irish bar at the moment. So last night I was in and we watched all the games and it was it was pretty heavy. And I'm in today as well for the German and England games. So that's going to be insane. Very nice. Even if hurling is the national sport number one and most popular, soccer is also very popular in Ireland. And the fans yeah. totally going crazy when they support their team yeah. at the international championships. So yeah, oh, absolutely. It's great. <laughs> it's a big shame that they aren't playing at this European Championship. I would have loved to see them, hopefully next time. Yes, so <laughs> now we know that you are much more Irish than German. <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, one and only exception is sports. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's look at your future at the last part of our interview and close it with that. Um, mm -hmm. What are your next uh, plans with your music? Yeah, so basically we're, we're planning on now, I'm, I'm in the songwriting process now at the moment, so my plan is to write some new songs and have them ready then, so hopefully have a new single by September, October, and then maybe even an EP, you know, just it really depends. So I'm going to be doing a lot of sessions with producers and songwriters and then kind of just see what I can come up with then. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the songwriter mode now at the moment and I'm just going to keep writing, writing until I find what, what I'm looking for. And then, yeah, we'll get into the studio and crack on with it. And yeah, hopefully release it then September, October. Well, just three or four months till the next songs. Uh, yeah. 
I hope that uh, this will be as you say and can't wait for the new music. How we can support you and so where we can follow you on social media? Yeah, so support wise, like you can follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on YouTube. So it's just Jamie O'Reilly Music. You can follow us on Facebook. And uh, yeah, at the moment, we also have some vinyls, which you can see right behind me here. <laughs> so yeah, like anyone that kind of helps to like even buy a vinyl or anything like that, it just helps us to get into the studio then to record new music or even to get new videos. So anything that anyone can do, we always greatly appreciate. But if anyone can follow us, that's also greatly appreciated too. So Very nice. And I've seen in your shop, you don't have only the vinyls, you have also special packages with lyrics you wrote down by hand or yeah. a, a big special package with a private concert in a <laughs> living room <laughs> yeah yeah we, we have we have some nice packages there just it was just we, we thought like what would be kind of nice and different than what other people do as well like so we we kind of went with them so and like as i say like the the vinyls come with really nice artwork comes with a cd you know and all the different packages vary then from different kind of things as well so Very cool and very special. So please support Jamie O'Reilly, follow him on social media. And of course, also following Stufe TV. For, uh, so you don't miss uh, one of the next episodes of our Music Talk Soundbox with newcomer musicians out of Baden-Württemberg, out of Stuttgart, in your case, Mannheim, or even out of Ireland. So Soundbox yeah. is getting international. So thank you <laughs> for watching and see you next time. Bye.